Hugh Jackman is back, baby, and that ain't no lie. Deadpool and Wolverine released this past weekend in 2024 and is directed by Sean Levy, who is also behind films such as The Pink Panther, The Night at the Museum franchise, Date Night, Real Steel, Free Guy, and The Atom Project. And this film, of course, is starring Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman in the title roles. These are two actors who have wanted to work with each other in the MCU with these roles for a long period of time and they finally got around to making it. But this film is also starring, and these are announced people, these are not spoiler-filled actors that I'm going to be reading off here. No, these are everyone that's been announced. Emma Corrin, Marina Bakarin, Rob Delaney, Leslie Uggams, Aaron Stanford, and Matthew McFadden. And please know before we get into anything, any talk about the movie at all, this is going to be a spoiler-free review, so you you are in the clear listening to me talk about this movie. We're not going to talk about any of the amazing cameos, or, I mean, maybe there's cameos in here. I don't know. You haven't seen it yet. What are you talking about? But just know we're not going to be covering the major spoilers of this movie. Really, hopefully, everything that you've seen in the trailer. It's been several years since the events of Deadpool 2, and Wade Wilson has seemed to have lost his way and to have lost his purpose in life. Well, suddenly, the TVA comes a knocking on his door and offers him a chance at redemption and a chance to belong to a much bigger construct where he is much more valued, which is called the MCU. However, certain shady things are going on with this deal, so Deadpool seeks out the help of the greatest X-Men to ever live, and that is Hugh Jackman, or sorry, Wolverine. Once they get together, it becomes a buddy cop traveling movie where they try to save the world, or at least they, they mention saving the world here, but it's really, they're saving the multiverse. And that's where we're at here in the whole MCU, we're in phase five, supposedly, and everything is dealing with the multiverse. Though we don't really know at this point in the MCU, like, what we're building towards. In the Infinity Saga, we had a sense that we were building towards Thanos, and we were building towards the Infinity Gauntlet and all the Infinity Stones. We would have one revealed every couple of years, and it was fun. It was exciting. We know what we are building towards. Here, though, in the Multiverse Saga, it's just a flawed concept. And I've been saying that since the inception of the Multiverse Saga, and dealing with all of these different variants of these different characters that we've seen on screen. Once you introduce different variants and different versions of other people, my mind goes, okay, well then what makes me care about this version of the character if something happens to them, if they lose their powers, or if they die, or if some tragedy befalls them because one of their loved ones dies, I just know that there is an infinite number of those other people out there in the universe, so why should I care about this one? And I'm going to be honest, those thoughts did creep into my mind during this movie because there are a lot of different variants of other characters. There are some actual versions of these characters that we have seen going back to 2000 with the inception of the first X-Man movie. I just say X-Man, what's wrong with me? It's X-Men. Good God, I sound like a boomer trying to explain comic books to a Gen Zer. My God. But it was getting a little confusing with all of these different variants popping up on screen. I'm going, okay, I like I want to care, and for the most part, I do care about these people, but sometimes I'm just like, it's getting a little too much. I think this whole multiverse saga idea kind of needs to come to an end. Hell, they even call it out a couple of times in this movie. And I think we need to move on to a just one timeline, the sacred timeline type concept for the next saga that we go into. That's the end of my little rant on the whole MCU and where they are right now. I'm still having a great time, and I love superhero films. The fact that we're still getting superhero films coming out on a yearly basis makes me extremely happy, because we go back to the 2000s and the the early 2000s we would get one superhero movie we're lucky if we get one a year, if not every couple of years. And this one's a little weird because we kind of reverted back to that. This is the only movie that Marvel Studios it's releasing in theaters this year. And I say good on for making it Deadpool and Wolverine because these are two characters that have been wanting to get together and to share a movie with each other since the very first Deadpool film. Hugh Jackman has said in many interviews for press releases for this film where he talked about how he announced his retirement that Logan was going to be his final appearance and then he says three days later 
Deadpool came out, and then he was like, oh crap, why the fuck did I open my mouth? So the fact that they're finally getting to do it, and getting connected to the MCU, which is still an amazing franchise, and the most profitable franchise that has ever been created. I'm so happy that Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman got to share the screen officially with each other, because they have great chemistry with each other, and they have a great friendship, and a great love towards each other. And every time they're on screen, you feel that passion, and you feel that love between them. Whether they're in their characters, or whether you're you're sensing it behind the character and behind the masks and it's Ryan and Hugh and they're just sharing the screen because they love each other. It's really inspiring and it makes me extremely happy to see that on screen. Ryan Reynolds is at the top of his game. He loves this character, he knows this character and his ability to riff and to shoot out one-liners like it's nothing. It's so impressive and he has so many in here that are great. They're not just thrown out there like in Deadpool 2 to be funny. A lot of the jokes in here makes sense and they play into the plot and they play into the story and Hugh Jackman is just still incredible in this role of Wolverine and Logan and the fact that he's finally in the yellow and blue getup that we know from the X-Men cartoon from the 90s and from the comics it's awesome to finally see him in that you go back to the 2000s X-Men movie and you were talking about those colorful costumes and they're like no 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 we're not doing that we need to have them look cool Putting them in those colorful things? Nah, that's not cool at all. The Matrix just came out, so everyone's in black, so we have to be in black too. We all gotta be in black leather. I love that they're in comic accurate costumes in here. It's fantastic. And just the smallest of spoilers, in the trailers, we don't see Hugh Jackman in the mask at all. In the movie, just know we get him in the mask, and the mask is awesome. Now we also know that Cassandra Nova is the villain of this story. She is the twin sister of Sir Patrick Stewart's Charles Xavier, and it's also from the trailers. She is in the void. There is Eliath in the background, and she's running things. She controls everything. She is a powerful mutant. And I do enjoy Emma Corrin's performance as Cassandra Nova. I think the time that she is given, I think she's pretty solid. Her character in my opinion, does suffer from the whole MCU trope of you got a shitty villain there. Or at least they just don't have enough time. We devote the majority of our time to our heroes. They are a protagonist. They are the thing that's driving the story. Our villain, yeah, they show up here and there to give us backstory and to do little tiny evil things, but they're rarely on screen. And I feel like that happened with Cassandra Nova in this film, unfortunately. But if you are a fan of superhero films, if you have been following the Marvel Cinematic Universe before Marvel Studios and you've been following it since X-Men in 2000, the surprises in here are going to make you extremely happy. They made me happy, I was laughing, I was applauding, I was so happy to see a couple of characters on here. Characters that that you know from the previous movies, characters that you know from projects that were trying to get off the ground but were never officially greenlit and never officially shot. They get a little redemption story in here too. And that whole opening sequence, I, I may not put this film in my top 10 of the MCU, possibly. It's a lot of fun, it really is. But in terms of the introductions, the opening credits of this movie, those opening credits of Deadpool Wolverine, easily top five, maybe top three or top two, because I can't get that opening sequence out of my head. That was amazing. Deadpool and Wolverine is everything that you want from an MCU film. A lot of fans out there, they're very vocal of their displeasure over the MCU over the last couple of years. I've been enjoying it. I, again, I still love superhero films. This is definitely a gigantic step in the right direction for all those naysayers out there now of the whole superhero genre for some reason. It's a lot of fun, and there is so much heart to this movie. And there's so much love to this movie. The love in getting it made, the love that these characters have with each other, the love that these actors have with each other. You see it in every single shot on screen, and it makes me so happy as a moviegoer and as a superhero fan to see that on my movie screen just so much love and so much happiness and so much joy i'm so glad i watched this movie it's one that i could watch on repeat over and over and over again because there's a lot in the background and it's just a great and fun lovable story i'm gonna give deadpool and wolverine four out of five blu-rays i like it a lot 
So guys, if you've seen Deadpool and Wolverine, what did you think about it? What is your ranking of all the Deadpool films? I guess there's three of them, hence a trilogy. Whatever your ranking is and whatever you thought of the movie, comment below and let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button to make sure you hit that bell. See you all the next time I'm released next movie review. So guys, I will see you next time on the channel, but in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.